doesn't attend too frequently, but is just been playing for so many years that, you know, yeah. those fundamentals do stick from game to game to game. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, like you say, you know, we've seen Jezzo all over the place. He, come, he comes to pretty much every wave smash, so um, definitely a known player. Uh, I've seen Mike Crate play a little bit. Like you say, I've seen his PT very strong. So we'll have to see how this how this one goes, see if Jezzo can repeat their first meeting or if Mike Curry can take this one instead. Yeah, and we will see, of course, we're going to most likely see the Rob coming out from Jezzo, their tried and true main in Ultimate. I would uh, Marco, we might see, might see the Rory, might see the Pokemon Trainer. It's a difficult one of those situations when you are trying to pick up that new character. Definitely. You do see that different, you can see that different result, some players don't, and they're too talented. But... For, for the rest <laughs> of us mortals, when you're picking up a new character, you do see that dip in results for a little while. And it's whether we're going to see Micro stick it out or whether they're going to go back to the tried and true Pokemon trainer. Of course, they're being first and second seeds. Even if they lose this set, both players will have a chance to get out. Yeah. So we will see. We will see. It's going to be an exciting set for you all. Hope everyone's having a lovely time here. Watching Smash Mania. Where, where stage wise, where do you reckon we're gonna go? Um, I'm not quite sure to be honest. I know that Rob loves he he likes Rob's quite tricky because he likes the big stages so he can use his lasers and his gyros to kind of keep you away. But then he can also make really good use of platform stages like Battlefield, so he can basically just kill you off of any interaction. So um same with PT really. Obviously Squirtle really likes platforms, Ivysaur already likes platforms. Yeah, there we go, Battlefield, perfect. Um, you know, Squirtle's got the up air chains, Ivysaur has the massive up airs, so I'm not too surprised here. We are seeing the Roy, though. Yes. So none of what I just said actually matters. <laughs> uh <laughs> it is one of those. And I'm, to be honest, I'm glad to see the Roy. If you mm. are going to train that new character, you want to get experience at the highest level at any event that you can. And of course, I mean, Roy's combo game, full stop, is excellent, but of course with... Yeah, expecting a very fast set, to be honest. Roy and Rob can rack up lots of damage really quickly, can kill really early, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see some explosive gameplay uh, from these two in this game. So immediately we're seeing lots of uh, lots of hitboxes thrown out, we're seeing a couple of gyroids, but yeah, Jezzo already at 60%. Nice parry there as well. Yeah, and we can see Micro just getting off to quite an explosive start right now. Maybe Ooh. Jezzo... Not being ready for the sort of breakneck pace that we see a lot of Roy's like to go with. Uh, Micro was quite an aggressive Pokemon trainer as well. So the pace that they're playing at isn't necessarily different. But certainly, Jezzo, having those years of experience, as I keep mentioning, is going to be able to adapt fairly quickly here. But years don't stop you from being trapped at the ledge <laughs> from either of these players. And both of these players have got some of the best ledge trapping in the business. Yeah, seeing it already with the, uh, the Gyroid when Roy is at the ledge. Also seeing some um, nice combos up to up air. We're seeing jab to back air as well. Not quite getting the strong hitbox. I didn't send as far as you would imagine, but we still got the uh, the Roy combos, even if it is a new character. So it's good to see from from Micro E here. Yeah, they're doing a really really excellent job at just attempting as hard as it is to pressure Rob off stage in that situation. And you can see Jezzo just going for that Z oh, dot throw. No, no mash there, and the up smash is going to take. The first stock. Now, this is where things can get a little bit spicy. Unlike in the previous set, Rob is known for being one of those characters that can just evaporate stocks like nothing. Yeah, definitely. Especially with, uh, it might take Roy a little bit longer than usual to take out the Rob as well. Because obviously, Rob is incredibly heavy with a decent recovery as well. Uh, and obviously, Roy not really one for going off stage. So, have to hope that uh, Mike Curry here can get a confirmed soon. Because he's already taking a lot of damage. Yeah. Very strange ledge interaction there, but a lovely up tilt on the top platform is going to take the first stock off of Jezzo. Not too much of a deficit here. No, only uh, only at 60% or so uh, deficit right now. And obviously, Roy, just as explosive as Rob, so very much able to uh, to make that up very quickly. But um, White Cree seems to be having a little bit of trouble with the gyroid, though. Being caught about that a lot in neutral. And there's the back air at the ledge with the gyroid ledge trap to so take the second stock uh for micro e there as well yeah rob backer being such a good tool for catching neutral get up because even if you don't get the hit you are perfectly positioned to punish anything else as well now this is where things can get a little bit scary Ooh. i'm liking these parries though really really enjoying these parries from micro e knowing that they have got a lot of experience in the matchup and when yep. you can parry those landing aerials from rob he suddenly becomes a little bit less of a scary character yeah being able to parry the neutral air is is massive in the rob matchup like you say 
being able to kind of negate one of Rob's best moves. Just so you can't just throw it out as uh, as he would like to when you're able to just parry it like that. Yeah, and we can see once again Jezo towards the ledge, but just grabs and back throws Micro. And just this damage is racking up 777 on Micro, but it's not lucky. Oh, Jazz back there. Though. Very nice. This is a very well refined Roy, I must say. When somebody told me that they were picking up, I thought we were going to see, you know, some fundamentals, but we're seeing parries, we're seeing good combos, we're seeing Jazz, we're having a great time. He's being very conservative with the side B as well. The uh, double is it double edge dance on yes. Roy as well. It is because um, obviously a lot of newer Roy players they're just gonna kind of mash the button and hope. But we're seeing Micro. He's very much pressing it once, pressing it twice, seeing how Jezo reacts. So and there's the unluckily the down air spike from Jezo able to secure that. The up B didn't quite snap the ledge as we would like. So Jezo able to punish that with the down air. Very standard. Rob yeah, stuff. it's one of those things where. Micro was sent so far off that, you know, maybe just would have got Magnet hands, but Jezo knowing that and having that down there just on yeah. lock, perfect. Even the sour spot, you're still in disadvantage there. It's so, so difficult. No but double jump either, yeah. Even though Jezo took game one, I say there was a, you know, that was a close game. It was, it was very close, yeah. Like you say, considering Micro is picking up a new character, it was a lot more polished than, you know, you would expect. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Micro, very skilled player at the game, so... You know, he's not going to pull out a character at tournament until he's ready. But Roy looks definitely, definitely ready, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you've always got that game too. You've got those adaptations available to you yeah. as well. We are seeing Smashville. I do like the pick. I do enjoy the pick of the smaller stage. Really going to be able to suffocate Rob, you know, using the platforms for that extra pressure here. However, of course, Rob standing underneath that platform and throwing out those projectiles. It's, it's difficult to get around. It's very it difficult is. to get around. Definitely. Definitely. The platform's quite nice in this match as well because both characters are uh, very strong up airs, lots of good shocking ability, so, you know, lots of room to be able to kind of pressure your opponent from above. Again, very explosive start to the match, though. 60 and 30, respectively, on our two players here. Lots of damage coming out very quickly in the game, too. Jab back air already, taking Rob to 90 got the ledge trap situation but just able to neutral air and kind of reset things yeah just about clipping there but that was a really really nice sequence there from micro e just knowing that rob is not that good oh, at the ledge but no. this is a side b that's not what you want to see at this point i yeah. mean that's not what you want to see at any point he didn't really use his double jump either i don't know if he didn't think he had it or if he just not used to roy's weight because obviously roy's a very very heavy character, lots of gravity, and obviously when you're used to playing a character like Pokemon Trainer. Oh and then no! SD. Not again! And unless the comeback of comebacks can happen, what started off as such a promising thing to for Micro has now turned into a real oh, nightmare. Jezo. And double jumped into it. No! Double not like this. Into it. And what a tragic way to end the set. Oh, Jezo so throwing his shoulder into the 2-0. He hates it. You really do hate to yeah, see it. He was it. doing so well on the Roy, man. Oh, not, not what you want to see at all. Good that's grief. that's so sad. I don't like to say it. it's probably it's probably the the, the gravity of Roy. Man. Like he, if you're kind of used to playing the floaty characters that most of Pokemon trainers are, you know, you've got the Squirtle, the Ivysaur, Charizard's a little heavier, but not too much. Um, so when you're kind of swapping from that to Roy, who you know, kind of plummets like a stone when you're off stage. It can be a little bit, uh, a little bit, um, what's the word? Jarring, I suppose. Yeah. Especially when you're up against such a good player as Jezo. Um, and he's able to kind of just, yeah, it was just sad. It was so unlucky. Yeah, and particularly after the second SD, you're so hard to keep that yeah. mindset going. And, you know, and the thing is with Jezo again, you know, in this game as well, having that situational awareness in those, like, dicier situations yeah. is so, so clutch. Like, knowing that, you know, I'm two stocks down. I've got to double jump straight back onto ledge and just clipping with the side B is just yeah unfortunate. It's just unfortunate. The, the awareness from both players even because like Jezo has played the game for so long that he's aware that Micro is going to be panicking in that situation. So he knows to just fall off side B. He's got no jump. He's got no recovery. It's just game done. So, well, you know, as unfortunate as it is for Micro, you know, good awareness from Jezo to be able to know that he can just kind of go off stage and do that and just secure the game for himself. So not even giving him the chance to get back into the game. Really. Yeah, but in the meantime, we have got our next match, which is going to be Boat versus Giggles. Giggles 
a Brighton player, but tends to frequent the London events, Captain Falcon main. Very I would say at this point, there's a real solid argument for him being the best Falcon in the UK. Um, I think a lot of other... I don't... There aren't that many Falcons out there. Now that I'm thinking about it, there aren't that many UK Falcons. Not really. I mean, we've, I think we've got a few at sort of the lower level of play, but not really that are kind of putting on results. Um, but, you know, Giggle's definitely very good Falcon. I saw him play at... I think it was it was either DBZ or Wave Smash. I think it was Wave Smash. Yeah. So um, he got he got fifth at Wave Smash yeah, nine, that was and he it. got wins over. I'm having a look here. He got wave blah, 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 wins on people like Gaia, WoJ, Cool Kings, and Zone as well. We're very really, really big upset. Yeah. Um, in the Played meantime, well. of course, we have got Boat, uh, Bournemouth, and Lancaster player Snake Mate, as we are seeing. Uh, set count is in Giggle's favour. One zero. Oh right, okay, that's interesting. So we're gonna see PS2. You know, you you know, you know what time it is. These players, they don't have time to ban. They want to get straight into this action as they have here in this game one. We're going to Pokemon Stadium, and we can already.